Physiology SAQ-12 discuss the physiological changes in a patient undergoing laparoscopic surgery in the Trendelenburg position, head down, with controlled ventilation, limit the organ systems to cardiovascular and respiratory, 5 marks each. Introduction. Surgical requirements for laparoscopic surgery includes creation of a pneumoperitoneum by gas insufflation into the peritoneal cavity, CO2 as the gas of choice for peritoneal insufflation as it is non-combustible, colorless, highly soluble and non-toxic. CO2 is insufflated at a rate of 4 to 6 liters per minute to achieve a pressure of 10 to 20 mmHg. The normal intra-abdominal pressure is 0 to 7 mmHg. Number 3. Maintenance of pneumoperitoneum by a constant gas flow of 200 to 400 mL per minute to compensate for the leaks from surgical pots. All these result in mechanical effects by increased intraperitoneal pressure and chemical effects of CO2 used during insufflation. CO2 is rapidly absorbed into the systemic circulation at 30 to 50 mL per minute. The Trendelenburg position of the patient with controlled ventilation during laparoscopy causes additional effects. Effects on the cardiovascular system Factors that increase blood pressure Initial autotransfusion of a few hundred mL of blood from the splanchnic circulation increases immediate circulating volume during pneumoperitoneum formation. Gas insufflation may trigger a sympathetic response leading to hypertension and tachycardia. Increased SVR as a result of pneumoperitoneum compressing peripheral vessels, catecholamine, vasopressin, and renin angiotensin release this may offset any drop in cardiac output due to reduced venous return, however at the expense of increased myocardial work. The head down position assists in venous return and causes a fluid bolus of about 1 litre, which is quickly offset by reflex barostimulation, vasodilation and potentially decreased perfusion to the brain. Reduced urine output may be due to ADH release and increased intra-abdominal pressure reducing renal blood flow. Factors that reduce blood pressure IVC compression by the pneumoperitoneum reduces venous return and thus cardiac output. Hypovolemia and shock worsens this effect. Visceral blood flow may be compromised by the pneumoperitoneum, for example, renal, intestinal or hepatic. Vagal reflex Peritoneal insufflation stretches the peritoneum and this may cause vagal stimulation, resulting in sinus bradycardia, nodal rhythm and occasional asystole. Benzogenic reflex. Peritoneal insufflation reduces venous return. An empty ventricle causes reduced coronary blood flow, myocardial ischemia, and the benzogenic reflex. Noxious ventricular stimuli is sensed by chemoreceptors and mechanoreceptors, and these activated receptors communicate along the unmyelinated vagal afferent type C fibers. There is increased parasympathetic output, and this produces a triad of bradycardia hypotension and coronary vasodilation. Extra peritoneal gas insufflation may cause reduced cardiac output and shock, secondary to pneumopericardium, pneumomediastinum or pneumothorax, which causes cardiac tamponade. Venous gas embolism might produce right ventricular outflow obstruction, and this reduces pulmonary venous return to the left heart. Surgical misadventures may cause hemorrhagic shock. Biphasic effects on venous return at first, autotransfusion of splanchnic blood causes increased venous return and increased cardiac output and initial increase in MAP. Afterwards, compression of IVC produces reduced venous return and reduced cardiac output and reduced MAP. Those dependent effects on steady state blood pressure. Typically, if IAP is less than 20 mmHg, this tends to increase MAP as increase in SVR outweighs the decrease in venous return and cardiac output. However, if IAP is more than 20 mmHg, this tends to reduce MAP as the reduction of venous return and cardiac output outweighs the effects of increased SVR. Hypercarbia may cause increased sympathetic activity, causing tachycardia, hypertension, and potentially arrhythmias. If pH is more than 7.2, increased sympathetic output increases inotropy. If pH is less than 7.2, Acidosis causes reduced inotropy. There is increased myocardial oxygen demand via increased heart rate and increased contractility.
Hypercarbia may cause increased myocardial oxygen supply via metabolic autoregulation. This is impaired if there is coronary artery disease. Respiratory acidosis, hyperkalemia, and associated arrhythmias may occur as acidosis sensitizes the myocardium to arrhythmogenic effects of catecholamines. Hypercarbia causes pulmonary vessel constriction. This increases pulmonary vascular resistance and right ventricular work. Systemic vasodilation may occur. This offsets the effect of increased SVR due to increased IAP. Systemic vasodilation may increase cerebral and ocular blood flow, which may increase ICP and IOP. Hypercarbia causes a shift in the OHDC curve to the right and increased oxygen unloading from hemoglobin. Effect on myocardial oxygen supply and demand. Factors causing increased myocardial oxygen demand includes tachycardia, increased contractility and increased stroke work secondary to increased SVR and PVR. Factors causing decreased oxygen demand of the heart includes vagal reflexes causing bradycardia. Factors causing increased myocardial oxygen supply includes metabolic autoregulation, increased MAP increasing coronary perfusion pressure, vagal reflexes causing bradycardia and increased coronary perfusion time, the ball effect, and the trendle lambert position increasing venous return, cardiac output, and coronary blood flow. Factors causing reduced myocardial oxygen supply includes tachycardia or arrhythmias, reducing coronary perfusion time, increased IAP, reducing venous return, cardiac output, and coronary blood flow, gas emboli, and extra peritoneal gas insufflation, potentially causing cardiac tamponade and reduced coronary perfusion pressure via Starling resistor mechanism. Effects of laparoscopy and Trendelenburg position on the respiratory system. Increased intra-abdominal pressure from the pneumoperitoneum causes cephalate displacement of the diaphragm that leads to reduced FRC, small airway closure, atelectasis, VQ mismatch, increased intrapulmonary shunting, hypoxemia, and reduced lung compliance. Reduced lung compliance increases airway pressure with the risk of barotrauma, and potentially hypoventilation. Increased CO2 load results in increased risk of hypercarbia and its related effects. Respiratory acidosis may occur. There is increased minute ventilation requirements and respiratory drive. PaO2 may reduce based on the alveolar gas equation. There is a shift of the OHDC to the right. Hypercarbia potentiates hypoxic pulmonary vessel constriction. This improves VQ matching and improves PaO2. Extra peritoneal gas insufflation, for example, pneumomediastinum or pneumothorax, may cause reduced ventilation, desaturation, hypercarbia, and increased airway pressures. The deleterious respiratory effects of increased intra-abdominal pressure is exacerbated by obesity, pregnancy, the trendle lambert position, and other causes of increased intra-abdominal pressure. Negative respi effects are reduced by reduced IAP, reverse trendle lambert position, lung recruitment maneuvers, and PEEP at the expense of CVS deleterious effects. The trendle lambert position may cause facial and upper airway edema, risking airway obstruction during extubation, regurgitation and pulmonary aspiration, endobronchial intubation, and one lung ventilation due to cephalate movement of the lungs and carina in relation to a fixed ETT. This may result in massive shunt and hypoxemia. High airway pressures delivered to one lung may cause barotrauma. Trendelenburg position increases the risk of atelectasis and reduction in FRC due to cephalate displacement of the diaphragm, weight of abdominal contents compressing on the diaphragm and therefore the lungs, and increased central blood volume. This increases shunting and hypoxemia. There is increased work of breathing secondary to increased impedance due to stretching of the chest wall and diaphragm. 